Next up, this is the last of the super quick five minute lightning talks. Ed Baker talking about building highways in the informatics landscape. Definitely the best front cover uh, of a title of a slide you've got. It's a rather glamorous way of how you join databases together, I'm afraid. So we kind of have these big informatics projects and also been quite involved in scratch pads. We want to integrate with them and play nicely with them in a kind of nice big happy families view of the world. So we want to go pretty much from this to this, like send data to these people. And as I said before, we don't really like bespoke solutions. So, we... so here we go. So how, how do we do it? And the problems are all these systems have slightly different data models. There's many ways you can model specimens, taxonomy, everything else. They're written in different programming languages by different people with slightly different ideas and often slightly different qualities. And they're kind of mutually incompatible. And how do you make them talk? So the kind of you go go bespoke solutions. And it's kind of you see it gets messy pretty quickly. Um, to add something into this requires a whole new set of bespoke solutions. So we kind of need something which is a bit better than everything talking to one thing at a time. A lingua franca of biodiversity informatics. So it's kind of a definition here. Language is widely used as a means of communication among speakers of other languages. So kind of like intermediary. So if you publish your data in one format and read that same format, you can talk to anyone who's playing in this field. And on top of that, it really needs to be understood, or the, the data needs to be easily understood by people, which basically means, can I read it in Excel if I want? And also machines, which means every field, every column, everywhere has to be quite precisely defined and easy to share using kind of existing technologies, easy infrastructure, so common separated files, zip files, can be delivered over the internet or the web. And so we have this Darwin Core archive format, or we the community as a whole over several years came up with a darn core archive format. And so that kind of consists of a, a core file, so we kind of, and we and most people kind of put the classification, the biological classification at the core of this. And there's all kinds of other data you might want to send at the same time, specimens, images, taxon descriptions. And so you put those in separate files of separate columns, but using the primary keys identifiers, you can link these back to the, the core file. So each one of the kind of surrounding files is linked to a record in the central file. And this is the basis of the Darwin Core Archive star schema. And that's kind of all very well, but you also need to say, what are these files? What columns have I chosen to use? How do I kind of or say to someone else using this data what it is? And so you have this meta file, which is kind of, what are these files? And what are all the columns in these files? What do they actually mean? And then you kind of lump these all together zip them up, literally in a zip file, and you get this kind of Darwin Core archive, which is the current lingua franca, I would argue. And so basically you take those of tax and descriptions, like all the stuff in Star Square, see like images, descriptions, all the ones for all the other taxa, and they end up in a nice zip file, which is quite easy to exchange. And you can send the whole data set at once. You don't have to make hundreds of different calls to various APIs to get it out. And then and if you send it to the eMonocot portal, send it to EOL, we can send it to pretty much anyone else. The benefits of doing this, because it's quite a lot of work, as we discovered. In the case of eMonocot portal, we can harvest stuff from all of the scratch pads, which are part of the eMonocot project, various other projects at Q. EOL can do the same thing, and hopefully one day at UBIF, we'll, we'll make that link. So this is the eMonocot portal, and so it's the same tax as before, um, with images from scratch pad, description, scroll down a bit, that maps from somewhere else. And so these aggregators, the Emonocot Portal and Encyclopedia of Life, provide a single user interface to like potentially many different systems. So you have one place to search, and you get the results back in, in one result set. So you can search across multiple databases, which is quite neat. Um, you can also share data using Darko Arco, Cartier DB, which is this kind of open geospatial analysis tool, so you can send your specimen data out to it. It can read the Darwin Core Archive and do mapping things. And you can also send to any one of the increasing number of people who support the standard. And it's, it really, for once, we have found a standard, I think, in this field. Thank you, Ed. Thanks very much. 
So yes, the Darwin Core Archive has really actually revolutionized or really made a major, uh, in, hugely important in terms of biodiversity informatics, simply enabling us to share data in a common way. It's certainly um, uh, really important. 